So till this point, we were able to configure the application, right? And we are basically able to implement Spring security. But then most of the settings are default, right? So we implemented Spring security by saying, hey, I got the dependency. This project is secured by Spring security. And Spring security says, okay, since you are using me, let me give you some default configuration and then we have changed something, okay? So basically we went to application properties, we, we set the username password, we have done some changes. But then we want to do more. We want to connect with database, we want to uh, disable, let's say I don't want to go, to go for a form login. So there are a lot of settings which you have to do. And then we'll do that step by step. In this video, let's see how do we configure that? How do we create our own settings? How do we change the way the security filter chain works? So to do that, of course, we want to change the way it works, right? By default, Spring Security provides you a filter chain. There are a lot of filters which comes into picture and then it will check for the defaults. But now I want to customize it. I want to have my own filter chain. And the way you can do that is by creating a config class. See, when you talk about Spring Framework and if you want to customize something or when you want to have your own configuration, you create a separate class, a config class, and then you define beans there which will inject the object. So now what I will do is to achieve that, I will create a class, but then I will create that class in a package. I will name this package as config. And in this package, I want to have that class, which is the security config. So this is the class we have. And in this class, we have to do that. First of all, I want to say that this is a configuration file to Spring. And to do that, you will say, configuration. Now your Spring knows that this is a configuration class and I have to search for the configuration here. Next, I don't want to go for the default uh, Spring security configuration. I want to implement it here. So to do that, you will say enable web security. Now by doing this, you are saying, hey, don't go for the default flow. Go with the flow which I mentioned here. So by doing this, we are doing two things. First, we are saying this is a configuration and we are saying that go with this configuration. Now what I want to change, see by default it will work for the security filter chain. I want to customize it. So in order to do that, what you have to do is you have to return a bean for security filter chain. So let's do that. So I will create a method which will return you the object of security filter chain, which is coming from uh, springframework.security.web.securityfilterchain. And then we can give any method name here. So I will say security filter chain. And this will basically give you the object of security chain. But how? So of course you have to return the object of security filter chain. Now who will give you this? So there is a type called HTTP security. You have to use this. Let's create reference for it called HTTP. You can also say HTTP security, but HTTP is a small word. So it makes sense. And I will be using that because HTTP has a method called build. So basically the build here returns the object of security filter chain. Now it is giving you some error here is because we have to add the exception, a throws exception here, a signature. Now this will do. So what we are doing is we are saying, hey, Spring security, don't go for the default. This is a security chain you have to go for. So this is a filter chain, follow this and you're good to go. Now, since we have not specified any filter here, by default, no filter is applied. I will show you. So what I will do is I will just uh, restart this. In fact, you know, let's comment the bean tag and let's restart then. Or maybe we have to also comment enable security. So I've commented both enable web security and uh, the bean here. That means this is still not applicable what we are doing. And I want to check without those things, if I hit the URL, you can see it is still enabling the uh, login form. So that means Spring security is still implemented. But if I do this and if I uncomment this bean now, and if I restart, so let's see if disables the default configuration. So let's go back here and instead of hitting the login, I will hit the URL and it's working. Without login, it is working. So if I refresh, it is still there. That means security is not implemented now. We are bypassing all the security. It's something like you're buying a lock and uh, you have not closing it properly. Or maybe you're not even locking it. So we don't want you to do that, right? So let's implement. So how do we secure it? How do we provide that uh, layer? The first thing I want to do is I will implement different security. I want to achieve that login form. I want to maybe uh, send the request through the post postman. 
Uh, but the first thing I want to do is I want to disable the CSRF. So let's do that. So I will go back to HTTP because that's the object which using which you are creating this build, right? So we have to make some changes in this object of HTTP, which is the object of HTTP security. And in this, the first thing I will do is I will say CSRF. I want to disable this, right? In the initial days, it was very simple. You can simply say uh, csrf.disable, but it will not work now. In Spring 6, uh, things are a bit different. Now, I will show you this in two steps. One, using the Lambda syntax and one without it. With Lambda, it becomes very easy to read and write. But then if you want to understand what is happening behind the scene, we'll go for imperative as well. So here, I'm, I'm saying http.csrf. And to disable it, I will use customizer. Again, I'm not, I'm not explaining that now. I will do that bit uh, after some time. So I will say customizer dot uh, disable. So what we're doing is we are disabling the CSRF. The next thing I want is, even if you write this, you're still, you will still not get the login form. I want it to be authorized. So if I don't authorize it, anyone can go there and they can log in. So even if I open a new incognito mode here, so if I go to incognito mode, and if I say localhost colon 8080, you can still open it. So there's no login restriction now. And to achieve that, what I will do is, I will say HTTP dot authorize, HTTP request for every request and people who are good with Lambda expression, they know what I'm writing. But in case if you're not familiar, I will show you the imperative style. So request dot, any request should be authenticated. So by doing this, what we are doing is no one should be able to access any page without authentication. So now after making those changes, if I restart my uh, ID or the application, go back to the browser and say refresh. And now you can see it says access to localhost was denied. That means authentication is ap applied here. So now that means you have to enter username and password. But then where you will do that? Even if I do that in Postman, and let's try to fetch the home page here. And if I say send, you can see it says forbidden. Even if I pass the values, you can see I'm passing the username and password. It still says forbidden because you are sending username and password but no way we are using it here. So how do we do that? First of all, I want to enable the form login. So HTTP dot, you can use something called a form login using customizer dot with default. So it will pick up the default properties and it will implement form login. Now, just by saying form login, let's see what happens. So let's go back here and refresh and you can see we got a form login now. Is it working? Let's try. So I will say Naveen Telisco, and it's working. You can see if I refresh, it works. So that means the form login has been implemented. So whatever customization you want, to, you want to do, you can do that in the code by using this HTTP object. But what about if I try to do that from Postman? Let's try from Postman. And if I say send, okay, we got the status okay, and we are happy about it. But look at the response. Response is basically a login form. Why we got login form here? It's because we are saying form login. That's why we got it. So if you want to do that from the postman, in that case, you have to add one more uh, thing here, which is HTTP dot HTTP basic. You have to implement this, or you have to enable this for the postman, for the REST access, REST API access. So let's go back here and see if that postman is working now. Say send, and you got it. So you can see we got the page, cool. So we have used two things. One is form login for the browser, and one is HTTP basic. So form login still works. Now logout will not work. Since we're implementing our own, it is expecting you to have your own login page. So logout will not work. Or it will, it will sign out directly. It will not give you login form. So now if I do Naveen and Talisco, okay, wrong password. So you can see it, it is working. So basically uh, by doing this, we are enabling that, that feature. Uh, of course you can disable your form login if you want. Uh, you can directly use your postman to access it. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to Make sure that you don't see, we are disabling the C, uh, CSRF, right? Now, why we are disabling it is because in one of the video, uh, we have talked about different ways of handling CSRF. One of them is what if you make your HTTP stateless? And if you do that, you don't have to worry about the session ID. So how do you make it stateless? It's you have to say HTTP dot session management, and you will take the session object and you will say session dot. How do you specify that you want to go for stateless or stateful? In that case, you have to use something called a session creation policy. So there's something called session creation policy. In this, you have to say session creation policy. So you can see we have different options. We got never if required stateless. I want to go for stateless and job done. So by doing it stateless, what we are doing is, see the problem with this is you can't log in from your browser with the login form is because for every request you have to pass the credentials. 
And when you have a form login, let me show you what, what I'm talking about. Uh, so if I refresh, and if I say Naveen and Telisco, so it will give you login form again, because now you are accessing a new resource. A new resource is a new session, right? New request. So you have to pass this detail every time. But with Postman, this will work. So if I go to Postman, if I say send, you can see this is working. And every time you send a request, you will get a new session ID. If you can see the number is changing here. So that's how you get the new session ID, right? But if you want this to work on a browser, what you can do is you can disable your form login because then you have to maintain your own sessions. And now if I restart, let's see what happened with the browser. Enter. Okay, so you can see we got a pop-up, not the login form, a pop-up. And in this pop-up, you can say, Navin Telisco, enter, and now it will work. So not with the form login, but HTTP basic will give you this pop-up. Refresh. And I mean, if you say enter, you will get new session ID every time. Cool, right? So that's how basically you can uh, do this. But again, the problem is how all these things are working. So what I will do is time being, I will just comment this, everything, and let's see what is happening behind the scene. So comment, why is not commenting here? Comment. Am I using the wrong, uh, I don't know, shortcut is that, maybe they have done some changes. So now uh, let's understand what is happening behind the scene. See, we understand what is this object, HTTP, secure, uh, HTTP object, right, which is HTTP security. And we also know that method, object will have some methods, right? So we got CSRF, and in this we are passing this customizer and disable. So what is this thing? To understand this thing, let's do that in an imperative, imperative way. So I will say HTTP dot, and I will use this method which is CSRF. And if you observe CSRF, you can see what it takes. It takes the object of customizer. In fact, that's a big name. I uh, can't even copy this. So yeah, we have a big name, customizer. Uh, in, in the, I mean, the type it takes is CSRF configure, the type, and the, again, the type is HTTP security. I hope I will remember this. Uh, so I will say customizer. So that's a part of security config package. And this will take CSRF configurer and uh, it was taking something, I forgot. So let me just say control space again. Uh, I don't want to do dictate. Uh, HTTP security object. So inside this, it should be HTTP security. So this is a type you have to work with, okay? And then let's create the object of it because CSRF method takes the object of customizer of type CSRF configure of type HTTP security. And let's give a name to it. I will say cust uh, or CSRF cust or cust CSRF equal to, and then you have to say new and the object for this. Now, the customizer itself is an interface. You can see we have the interface and the method name is customize. That means if you are using this, uh, if you want to get the object of it, we have to create a method. You have to define the method of it using anonymous in a class. Okay, and in this particular method, use, you, using this object, I will name. I will not use the name as HTTP configurer, uh, CSRF configurer. I can use any other name, I will say, Customizer. I mean, you can use, use any name, name, right? So the name I'm using here is Customizer. And using this object, I can do whatever I want now. So using Customizer, you can, you can use different methods. What we are using it for is Disable, right? Now, this is the way you create the object of Customizer, CSRF configured HTTP security, because this object you have to pass inside HTTP.CSRF. I'll pass this object, and your job is done. So by doing all these things, you are disabling your CSRF. Oh, let the task, right? Now, since this is an interface and this is a functional interface, if I show you configure, this is a functional interface, which means you can use Lambda here. And people who are familiar with Lambda, they know how to create Lambda. It's very simple. You create, uh, you remove the extra stuff. And uh, you, I mean, if you don't know Lambda, just search for Lambda expression on YouTube or uh, there is called Lambda, Java Lambda. That should make sense. So you can replace the entire code this, this entire code with one line. So this line here, which, I'm, which I've written, is equal to this number of lines. Oh, we can do the same thing for authorized request. Let's try that. Uh, HTTP dot authorize HTTP request, and look what it is asking you for. Look at the name. Customizer auth authorization manager request uh, matcher registry, and then you have to get object for this, and then you have to pass it in the method, like authorize HTTP request. Same goes for the HTTP basic. Let's try for that, HTTP basic. It is asking you for the object of, again, customizer, but since we want to go for default configuration, we are not changing anything. We are saying customizer dot with defaults. So it will become the default settings. And that's how it is working behind the scene. 
And now you know what is happening behind. So for all the methods here, same thing. You have to implement certain uh, interface and define the method and pass the object here. Uh, another thing which you can do here is uh, instead of doing all these things one by one, you can use a builder pattern. What I'm saying is remove this semicolon and remove this HTTP. So you can just add at the end something like this. So HTTP dot CSRF that particular uh, setting, then authorize request. And then I will just put that below somewhere. Okay, what's wrong with my uh, ID settings? All the settings have been changed. <laughs> this is weird. Okay, I will just say enter here, remove the semicolon. And now you can put this after this. So you can see for one object, you are applying different uh, settings. I can remove this. And the same thing goes for this part cut and paste it here. Just that you don't have to put semicolon at the end and put it together. If it is big, you can just say enter here to make it more readable and remove this. So by doing this, you are making it more readable and in proper sequence. So this is this is called builder pattern. So for this object, you are doing this, then you are doing this. You know, we, when you have a belt in the factory where the object passes from one machine to other machine, same thing just happening here. One object is passing to different methods and customizing it. In fact, what you can also do is you can directly say return here. Then you don't have to write return again. It's just that at the end, you have to say dot build. Even this looks cool. So that's it. Uh, let me just run this after making all those changes. I hope this will work. If you see a warning here, just that it is saying you to use method reference instead of Lambda. Uh, you can replace this uh, method reference or lambda to method reference even that works. Okay, restart done. Let's verify from the postman. Hit this, you're getting the response. Maybe I'll also try to work with students if you're getting all the students and you got it. Okay, let's also see if the post request is working. So I will say post, you can say we have a post request here. Uh, I'm sending the headers. Okay, we are sending CSF token. Let's, let's, let's not send it and done you can see it is working. So even without the token, it is working because we are disabling the CSRF request or CSRF setting. So yeah, that's it from this where we talked about different settings or different things you can do. The reason we are doing this is because in the upcoming videos, we have to do a lot of changes, right? Working with the uh, user, username password coming from database, working with uh, JWT and different stuff. So I hope you're excited for the entire series. I'm enjoying it. I hope you are. If you are, let me know in the comments and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.